Video is a great way to share information with your coworkers. The problem that I usually hear is you need to find a way to record the video without purchasing yet another piece of software. If your company is already using SharePoint, then the record feature for Stream on SharePoint might be the solution that you're looking for. To find the homepage for Stream on SharePoint, go to Microsoft365.com and click the app launcher in the upper left-hand corner. Choose Stream from the list. Technically, any video you upload to SharePoint, OneDrive, or Teams falls under the Stream on SharePoint umbrella. But this is the place you will go if you want to record a video using the Stream Record function. It is important to know that the recording will be limited to 15 minutes. So let's jump right in and click on the recording button. This will take you to a stream setup page and by default, your web camera will be turned on and it's capturing video. You can also switch it to capture just audio and that video will automatically turn off. Now, if I toggle back to video, I'd like to draw your attention up to the upper right hand corner. And here you can see that you can toggle the camera on and off as well as the microphone on and off. Next to that, you have these three dots for more options. When I click on that, you will see four different choices. You have mirror video, and this is more of an aesthetic choice than anything, but pay attention to my microphone. It's gonna appear on this side of the screen. And now it's on the opposite side of the screen. It doesn't really matter, it's just what makes sense to you. I'm so used to looking at the microphone on this side, I'm just gonna turn it back to the regular one. The other thing that's kind of cool is the teleprompter. So this allows you to paste your script in the teleprompter window. You can make the font size larger or smaller, so I can decrease it to make it easier to read. And you can also change the scroll speed. You can double check before you even start recording that it's going to scroll at the speed that makes sense for you by clicking on the play button. And now if I were recording an actual video, I can have the words right in front of me and read them off of the screen as I'm recording. I'm gonna dismiss the teleprompter and go back to the three buttons for more options. And these are the settings I use most, device settings for camera and microphone. So sometimes people will say to me, I'm not getting any video or I'm not getting any audio. Typically, Stream will pick up your web camera and any microphone you may have. However, there are times when your computer settings may prevent Stream from auto-selecting the devices. The most common reason is you have not allowed your web browser to use your camera or microphone. I suggest as a best practice before you start recording anything, come to the settings and make sure that your microphone and camera are selected and it doesn't default to none. So now that we've checked our settings, let's go further down the right hand side of the screen and we have this toolbar that is relatively new for a stream record function. This will allow you to place text on the screen if you like. So when you click on that, you get these few options here. So I can click on that and then I can say news of the day. Whatever makes sense for your video. Then I can grab it and move it around on the screen or resize it if I like, if I want to. And notice that you have the option to change the font, the font color and the stroke color behind it. Now for me, the red is fine. It goes with the stream theme of what we're talking about today. Next, you have the option to draw on the screen. Now I don't use this a lot as, as a standalone option, but I do use it if I decide to put a board on the screen. So let's jump down to that setting really quick. When you click on board, you have all these different choices to create a board for half of your screen. I typically use the blackboard. It's easier for people to read off of it as compared to some of these things like the notebook or the rainbow colors. Sometimes that can be hard for people to read from. So I just usually keep it simple with the blackboard. Now, if I wanted to, I can then pick color and pick how big my crayon wants to be. And I can start writing on the screen and draw in a message. You also can use stickers if you want. And you can place those in the screen and move them around as well. Delete them if you pick the wrong one. Now, if you put something on, if you put several things on the screen and then decide you don't want something anymore, you can go to the upper left hand side where we have the undo or clear buttons. When I hit clear, it takes all of the annotations off of the screen. 
Another thing that's been added to stream recordings is the option to put in a filter. So right now, this is just my regular camera footage. And you can see that there are several filters to choose from. Now, I typically don't use these because they don't really work well with the style of video that I do, but I just wanted to show you all that you can play with filters if you want. You can also add frames to your video. So I might add a little bit of a colorful border to my video. Or you can just leave it off entirely. The last option we're going to look at here is the photos. Now, this is one I would use most that I use most often because when I do my videos for work, I usually bring in our logo so that it has our branding on it. And if people have questions about the video, they know exactly who to contact because it has our logo on it. In this case, we're talking about stream. So I'm going to bring in the stream logo and just place it right here on the screen. So play with these different options here in the toolbar and see which one works best for you. Let me know in the comments below if you have a favorite thing from the toolbar that you think you'll use a lot. Now that we've looked at the items in the toolbar, let's look at a couple of other options before we record our video. So you can also add a backdrop to the video if you want. You can use a photo as a backdrop and one of the things I've seen people do is create like a branded message behind them for, for their company logos and stuff. You can use your entire screen as you can use a screen or a tab as a backdrop. We're going to cancel that because we don't want to do that right now. I can put on a blur effect if that makes sense. And then you have all these other colorful choices to go through. So let's just click on glitter. And it has a moving background behind me, which creates a little bit of visual interest. When it comes to these backdrops, I personally think of them like transitions. Be careful that you don't use too many because then you can get too much going on your screen. If you do have one of the backdrops, notice that a toolbar appears above the screen and it allows you to move yourself to one of the corners of the screen. Now this is particularly useful when I'm going to record my screen and do a screen capture instead of just a talking head style video. This is very similar to what you see when screen sharing in Teams. You will select what you want to share from the dialog box, choose if you want to include system audio, and then click share. In stream, this will start the recording and trigger the three second countdown. So now the recording has started and you can tell by the countdown how much time we have left. You can stop the recording or pause the recording, but in this case, let's just switch to a different screen and pretend to capture the instructions for how to find stream on SharePoint. I'm just going to let this run for a few seconds so that we have a little bit of footage to use so that we can see what features are available after we go back and stop the recording. Stream on SharePoint has changed a lot since it was first launched, and these post-recording features are an example of that. In the toolbar, you have the option to trim the beginning and the end of the video. In this example, you don't need to see the steps that I took to switch from the stream recorder to get to the Microsoft 365 page, so I'm going to trim that out. The split button is new, and what this lets you do is find something in the middle of the footage, click split in order to break the timeline of the video, and then if you click split in two different spots, you can actually cut something out of the middle of the video. In this example, it takes a few seconds to switch from the first to the second screen, and I can split the video and take that out entirely. Stream is not going to be as precise as proper editing software, but it's really good for your quick and informal videos. Another feature added to Stream on SharePoint is the option to add music to your video. When selected, you will see some choices in various categories. You can go through the list and click the title to listen to the music before adding it. At the time this video is being recorded, you cannot upload music. If you find one you like, click the plus sign and add the track. In the toolbar at the bottom of the screen, you will see that it no longer says add music. It changes to the name of the track that you chose, in this case, tinkering. When I click on that, I can see additional options. Right now, the volume is set to 15. I can use the slider bar to either make the music louder or quieter in my video. Or I can click remove if I decide that I don't like the music. When you are done making edits, click on finish in the lower right hand corner. Your video is going to automatically be associated with your OneDrive.
When it's done rendering, you will see the standard video settings on the right hand side for the thumbnail, transcripts, etc. If you would like to move the video to somewhere else besides your OneDrive or add it to a playlist, you can find the options for that in the upper left hand corner. You can also click on the three dots and download a copy of the video. A floating dialog box will appear letting you know that this is the video only and not the content such as transcripts. Now I usually download the videos because I want to put them in proper editing software. The one thing that's important to know is that it's going to download as a WebM file and a lot of video editing softwares need it to be an MP4 file. I'm not sure why Microsoft chose this file type, but just know you may need to convert the file to an MP4 to use it with other software. There's more to learn about Stream on SharePoint, so check out the playlist that's on the screen now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.